Accounting Equation and Excel, financial statement creation from the Accounting Equation. Get ready and some coffee because we're getting into the Accounting Foundation, the Accounting Equation, using Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise so you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you wanna build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may wanna begin back there or you could just create your own worksheet from this point as we move forward or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, three tabs down below, example, practice, blank, example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on is where we started with a blank worksheet but are basically working within a template moving forward. However, adding to this template as needed as we go. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing. We've been creating, in essence, our new bookkeeping system with the use of the accounting equation within Excel, imagining that we had beginning balances that we are pulling in from a prior accounting system. Those are these beginning balances because that's often from a practical standpoint, the scenario. We have a, a new system that we're putting together. We had some bookkeeping that was done in the prior system that we're gonna need to pull over. When we do that, we're usually gonna want to put the entire year of information into the current system, drawing the line, having the prior data in the prior system, or at least that's one way and the way we are putting it together here. Therefore, we're just looking at the balance sheet accounts at this point in time because the income statement has rolled into equity and is closed out. And so therefore, we've our strategy has been to pick up each of these beginning balances, being mindful of any added information needed, such as subsidiary ledgers, constructing those as we go, putting the other side to equity. And given the fact that all of the other side of the transactions are to equity because of the double entry accounting system. Our equity should be correct at the 77,896. Let's give that a double check over here. If I go back on on over, uh, we can we could see that over here. Let's go into our blank worksheet and take a look at the equity down below 77,896. So that is good. What we're going to do now is take this information that is in the format of an accounting equation, which is kind of like a trial balance, which has debits and credits, but we're using an accounting equation here. And we will then use that to construct our beginning uh, financial statements on the right. So what I'll do is we'll, we'll build this out, listing this out in a vertical format, which is a little bit easier to work with and then construct our financial statements from it. So if you don't have access to this workbook, you can just see how we're converting this into a vertical proportion, type that in there, and then work on our uh, formatting of the balance sheet. That's all we're gonna add right now, no income statement, no statement of equity, because we don't have any current data in the system for the current time period, which would create the, the uh, income statement. All of the activity for an income statement was in the prior year, which we have now closed out and are only looking at the beginning balance at this point in time. All right, let's go to the let's go to the blank tab. So if I scroll up, you'll recall that we've been entering all these journal entries here. Here is our accounting equation. 
you can see that our equity is in balance. If I go over to the equity side of things, note that we have nothing in the income statement, of course, because again, we're just starting out and the equity over here is in one account called owner's equity. So I just want to point out that if you were in the type of, so there's the 77896. Now, if you were doing this in accounting software, you might try to put that into a clearing account or the software might do that in QuickBooks, for example, they often put the other side into opening balance equity, which is an equity type of account, which you would typically want to close out to the normal equity account, which might be called owner's equity, the account that QuickBooks will then roll the income statement into on a yearly basis. Now, if you were a partnership, then you'd have a little bit more work because remember, once you have the equity correct, total equity is correct, meaning that's the owner's claim to the assets, you might have to then further break it out if it were a partnership between the partners. So if you had five different partners, you'd have to have different equity accounts based on their partnership. So once you have completed total equity, then you can use a journal entry to break it out properly between uh, the partners, which should be an easy thing to do once total equity is correct. Same with a corporation is actually a little bit easier. It's going to be usually broken out between retained earnings, earnings from the activity of the corporation that has not yet been distributed in the form of dividends, dividends being the corporate equivalent to like draws, for example, and then the investment from the owners, which is the initial issuance of the stock. So, so you could, once you have this broken out, you can break it out into those components of a corporation. Uh, and that would be that, that idea. So now we're going to be in a sole proprietorship. So we have equities, just this one number. So now we're going to say, all right, once that is set up, let's create our financial statements to put it in a financial statement, uh, look. Now notice it already kind of looks like a financial statement. We have the accounting equation, which is of course, assets equal liabilities plus equity. That is the balance sheet, right? The balance sheet is the accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus equity. The income statement is a timing statement breaking out. You can think of it as equity, part of equity, meaning how did we get there over a time frame, which we'll look at later because we haven't had any time frame passing since we started the new accounting system, therefore no income statement. But within the accounting equation, we have subcategories for the balance sheet such as current assets, those assets that are going to be consumed like within a year, for example. And then we've got the, or you might think of them as the assets closest to uh, cash. I'm going to make this fixed assets a little bit larger to match this one at 14. Okay, so there it is. We've got the fixed assets, which are going to be the long-term assets, property, plants, and equipment assets that we're going to consume by using them over a longer period of time in a separate category in our balance sheet. And then the liabilities, normally we'll have current liabilities and long-term liabilities. Typically, you don't have as many categories within long-term liabilities, possibly just like a loan, which we do have right now, but might not be breaking out into long-term yet uh, because uh, we'll deal with that later when we do the adjusting entries. And then we've got the equity and the equity has the, the is this often, the most confusing component to many people because many people don't really understand what equity means you can kind of think of it as similar to the liabilities in that if the uh, books were thought of as a separate entity it has to own everything it has to somebody either they own it to the bank the liabilities right or they owe it to the owner which is going to be the equity also confusing because the owner could be a sole proprietor, one person, a little bit easier, or a partnership, multiple owners that you have to break out the equity into then, similar to having like accounts payable, broken out by who you owe the money to, vendors, and uh, and then in a corporation, the shareholders, meaning you would break the, the equity out by equal units, like dollars, right? That's what a dollar kind of is therefore to have equal representations of value per dollar, equal representations of equity per share is the general idea. But it's also confusing because we have the income statement, which is in essence part of the balance sheet. And that's going to be the activity, the earnings that we have over a time frame, typically a month or a year, which rolls into the equity section, which at this point we don't have to deal with because once again, 
we have no timing situation because we just pulled in the beginning balances and we'll be working on the income statement timing accounts revenue and expenses in the future all right and then we have the subsidiary ledgers over here and so so that's that and so on so let's go all the way to the right and i'm going to make a skinny uh bv over here actually let's make this a little bit easier let's let's hide some cells we'll, pr we'll practice hiding some cells over here so i'm going to go all the way uh to this side i don't need any of the sub ledgers so i want to go from this ah let's go from the skinny let's go from the skinny and then go all the way to the end of the sub ledgers because we do not need those so and then i'm going to right click and hide those items all right now note that i also have the freeze panes on right now maybe i should take that off to start off with that means these headers are showing all the time that might confuse things so i'm going to go to the home tab I'm going to go to the view and freeze panes. I'm going to unfreeze the panes. So now they are no longer frozen. All right. And then what I'd like to do is put this in a vertical format because when I build my balance sheet, it's kind of tedious to be reaching over here to the account. And then it's going to be the number is going to be way down here. What I would like to have is in a vertical standpoint, all of the assets listed vertically and then the ending numbers where we are currently at next to it like this so i just want to reformat my accounting equation to assets liabilities and equity this way that will be easier for us to pull from to make the financial statements so i'm not going to make this dynamic so it will change automatically i'm just going to do it periodically making make making this adjustment so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just take these these are all my accounts and i'm going to copy those i'm going to copy those and i'm going to put them over here and bw right click and i'll paste them uh maybe just one two three paste them one two three just the values i don't really need the formatting so we have that and then i just want to copy the end numbers the end numbers where we ended off at that's on line 23 our ending balance numbers I'm gonna pull all those numbers copy them right click and copy and then i'm going to put them underneath so that those are the numbers we want to work with i need to paste them one two three not the formulas because then it's going to try to draw from the related cells just the ending values that means it's not dynamic it won't change along with us as we as we adjust our numbers we're just going to make this periodically. We will create this periodically. Now, I don't need the equal signs. So I'm, this column CC, I'm going to choose that whole column and just delete it. Remove that. I don't want the plus in there. So I'm going to choose this whole column. Right click and delete that. All right. So now I could pull from these numbers, but I don't, and I don't need the income statement. So I'm going to take this whole sales to utilities. That's not necessary right click and delete that all right so that's something i can work with right there that's pretty that's a lot cleaner i could just turn these numbers into a balance sheet but i'd like to format them in a vertical fashion so one way i can do that is this is a nice little trick it's use, useful to know about i could select all of these right click and copy them and then i'm going to paste it uh, down here and then right click but i want to paste it special pasting it special and then i want to uh uh transpose is that what it's called i think it is transpose it click in the transpose and enter so now it puts it in a vertical format pretty fancy right and so then i can let's make this a little larger do, 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 and do the same thing with the numbers i'm going to copy these copy these put them over here right click and paste special transpose boom all right so there we have it so 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 now we've got these numbers in a vertical fashion and i could uh now it's a little bit easier to convert them into the balance sheet now notice that transposing thing just so you know isn't as easy to do if there's formulas involved so that's why I, if I copied like these numbers down here and, and tried to transpose with the formulas, it might mess things up. So I wanted to, I want to copy and paste them without any formulas. 
and then copy and transpose them. Now I have them vertical, but they're not dynamic. They will not change as I change the cells over here. That's okay. I'm just going to make it periodically. All right. So then I'm going to delete all this stuff. This is no longer needed. It's done its job. Boom. All right. So now let's make a skinny BV. I'm going to pull this in a bit. And that's basically our financials. Let's color code it to the same color coding that we had in uh, over before. Our assets are going to go from cash down to accumulated depreciation. Let's go cash down to inventory, current assets, home tab, color coding that to green. I think it was dark green. And then these, I'm going to color code these to the light green. That's the other assets that are property, plants, and equipment. Liabilities were red. So let's make these red. Uh, and so I'll go do it and I'll make these red. I think I made, I will, I'll try to break this one out to a long-term liability, even though I didn't, even though I had it in short term, let's imagine that that's long-term and I'll recode that just so we can see a different category. So I'm going to make these dark red and then these light red. And then draws and owner's equity. I'll make those dark blue. Those are the equity. Dark blue. All right. So then I want to make these and these and these text white. So I'm going to go home tab, font group, drop down, make the text white. So there we have that. And then I'll select the whole thing and let's put some borders around it. Home tab, font group, borders. Boom. Okay. Now notice that this is basically like a trial balance, right? But it's still in like an accounting equation standpoint. So in other words, if I was to sum this up, I get total assets here. Liabilities are the sum of these and equity are the sum of these. So if I say liabilities plus equity, uh, wait a second. Okay. Paso. K Paso. I see an equity. I, I included the 22. Why did I do that? Poor K. So now we've got assets equal liabilities plus equity. Now, the other way you can see that is basically if it was converted to debits and credits, these liabilities and equity in general are credits, right? So then you'd have the debits equal the credits, right? That's how that's, you know, just how you, another way you could look at it but we're doing the accounting equation right now so we'll say okay now i can take that and just convert it into a balance sheet so let's make a, another skinny by to do this we'll practice our formatting to do this as we go selecting the skinny over here home tab format paint it to by by and then we're going to say this is going to be assets so and I'll make that black and white for my header. So I'm going to make this black and white for our balance sheet. I probably should put balance sheet above it, right? Balance sheet. Balance sheet. And I should put the date, but as of 1231, let's say, uh, I should probably do that. As of 1231, I'm just, I'm going to put a 1231. All right. That's good. Boom, boom. All right. Or you could say 1-1 one, one as of January or 1231 of the prior year. Okay. So then we have our category of current assets, colon. So when you see financial statements, this is like one of the formal ways that you might construct your financial statement. It's also useful formatting if you were to make tables, something looking similar to like a page of a tax code or something breaking out a formula into a vertical table format so you can see all of the calculations being played out in a vertical format rather than a horizontal kind of algebraic format right so we're going to say all right within here we have equals the cash and then we have equals there's undeposited funds i'll pull that in even though there's nothing in it just so we can see how we're pulling every number in accounts receivable and then inventory. Now in practice, obviously we might want to group cash and undeposited funds together into one line item. If I was to group it for like the bank or something like that. But if you were to see this 
formatted or put together in a detailed balance sheet from accounting software like a QuickBooks, uh, it would probably break out the undeposited funds or you can group all of them together as just current assets, right? So I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. And so then once, see the colon means that there's a subcategory and then down below, I'm gonna put total current assets. Now I'm also gonna indicate that it's a subcategory by indenting makes it a little bit easier on the eyes. So I'll select these ones and I'm gonna to go to the home tab, alignment and indent. So now it's indented. I'm gonna double indent the total. So I'm gonna go home tab, alignment, indent again. Then we'll pull in our numbers. This equals to 25,000. I should be able to just copy that down because the relative references will copy the rest of them for the current assets. Boom, let's double check it, looks good. And then we'll sum it up equals to SUM. Notice I'm pulling the sum into the outer column, which again is another indication that these are all a subcategory. We know that because of the colon, because of the indentation, and because we pull them into the inner bit and then summed them up into the outer bit. That's kind of like the easiest format on the eyes to be able to pick everything up pretty clearly by the formatting which is, you notice you have everything over here in a, like a trial balance format or over here in the accounting equation format, but it's easier on the eyes for reporting purposes to use the formal breakout of a balance sheet, right? So then I'm gonna go home tab, font group, let's put an underline right here. So then we've got property, plant and equipment. You might call it like depreciable assets or fixed assets, it might be called. And, and here, all we have currently is furniture and equipment. Uh, we could also in that category, you might also see buildings, land uh, uh, improvements, right? And so furniture and equipment is gonna be equal to the 75,000 and then accumulated depreciation notice that's a negative number over here and our system on our side i could enter it as a negative but maybe i want to reverse it so i'm going to say negative of that number showing it as a positive number on our financial statements but we know that you subtract these two furniture and equipment minus the accumulated depreciation gives you the book value also note that if you had more categories than furniture and equipment like automobile like building, for example, then you have a, a choice as to whether you wanna have a more detailed balance sheet or less detailed balance sheet where you might, for example, break out each category and it's related accumulated depreciation by category, giving you the book value of each category, which we might talk about later as we work through the practice problem and then sum up each of the book values of each category to give you the total book value of property, plants, and equipment. So we'll get into that later, but that's gonna give us the total, and I'm just gonna call it P, P, and E, so it fits, and that's gonna be in the outer column, equals, this is a subtraction problem. If you're out of balance, this is one of the most common errors because this contra asset account, people add it together, which will throw you out of balance. We'll be able to figure that out because we'll be out of balance and then we can see what happened. Que paso, figure it out. Let's put an underline. Let's do some indentations here. We'll select these items, home tab, alignment, indent. Here, home tab, alignment, indent again. And that's gonna give us our total assets. Total assets is gonna be the sum of the outer column. So once it's in the outer column, notice just by normal formatting techniques, I know that I'm not gonna go in here, right? I'm, if I'm over here, it's only gonna sum up the current column that I am in. So equals the sum of the outer column and we'll underline that. That gives us our total assets, 115,896, which should tie out to the sum of all these. If I just highlight them and look at the sum down here, 115,896. All right, now let's do the liabilities. We could put the liabilities in equity down below, which is a common formatting for software like a QuickBooks or Xero because that fits nicely on a vertical page that is a portrait layout rather than landscape. But 
Uh, it, but it's almost easier on the eyes a lot of times to put it left to right because that represents the two sides of the coins more easily and you can show then your bottom line numbers matching kind of on the same line, which would be kind of nice. Let's put a double underline under this one while we're at it, double underline. All right, so I'm gonna make a skinny CC over here. And just so you know, I'll put you on that email just so you know it's a skinny CC. We're gonna say liabilities. And we'll make that black and white, black, white. And these, we're gonna once again have current liabi liabilities. If I didn't spell that right, I'll fix it in a second. Let's put a colon behind it because that represents that there's gonna be a subcategory again. In other words, we're not just gonna put all liabilities, we're breaking out current liabilities. I know I said before that the loan payable is gonna be current and then we'll break out the long-term portion. We're gonna imagine for our purposes here that it is all long-term, meaning it's due after a year so that we can see the two main categories of liabilities, short-term and uh, long-term or current liabilities and long-term liabilities. We'll talk more about that loan in the future. So this is just gonna equal the accounts payable and I'll copy that down to the credit card payable. Let's make this a little bit larger and we'll bring in the numbers. This equals the 15,000. I'm gonna copy that down. Boom, let's do our, so it's a, it's a subtotal. So that's gonna give us our total current liabilities. Let's do our formatting. I'm gonna select all of these and indent them. Home tab, alignment indent. I'll double indent the total double indent the total. So the sum will be on the outside here equals the sum of the current liabilities. Boom. And then we're gonna have long-term liabilities. Long-term liabilities. Now notice I only have one long-term liability, which is fairly common for a lot of businesses, especially when we're trying to group all of the loans payables together into one line item called loan payable, even though it represents multiple loans. So a lot of times people will not even put long-term liabilities. They'll just say, hey, there's only one line item. I'm just gonna put that one account there and then put it in the outer column. But I'm gonna break it out in detail just so you can see kind of the same sub account team categories. So the only account I have here is long-term liability. So again, I could put that out here and just say, that is the total. Do I need another line totaling that up? But I just wanna use the same formatting. We would normally pull that into the inner column here and then give us the total long-term liabilities. And then we'll put that outside, which equals the same number, redundant, but using but it's mirroring what's happening up top let's select these two and indent them and then indent this one again put an underline under here not the double underline just a single one single underline for formatting sake for formatting sake total liabilities now we'll just sum up the outer column on the liabilities equals the sum of the outer column underline all right and then not italic dang it and then we have one more section over here and that's going to be equity now remember equity if it was a corporation would be like corporation corporate equity sole proprietorship sole proprietor equity if it was a partnership partnership equity but the total equity is the same no matter what the entity structure representing the owner's claim to the assets as opposed to the liabilities claims to the assets it's just that those owners could be one person sole proprietorship multiple people partnership in which case we need multiple partner capital accounts possibly in another statement breaking out those capital accounts per what is owed to each partner or corporation in which case the owners are represented by equal chunks shares all right, so we're gonna say, we're just a sole proprietorship here. So we're gonna just say, I could put the draws in there, but we don't have anything in there. So let's just put the owner's equity. And again, I'm just gonna this time put it right in the outer column because it's the only number that we have, right? So I'll just put it on the outer column there instead of doing what I kind of did up here 
with an equity and then and then uh, one account and then total equity. All right, so then I'm gonna say, cause that fits beautifully because now we're right at the same bottom line where we have the total liabilities and equity outer column. I'm not gonna add all of this up now. So notice I already have an underline right here. So I only wanna add these two up because this is already included. So this is gonna be equal to the sum of just the 38 and the 77. So there we have that. Now I could have broke these out into another outer column over here, total liabilities out here, and then this one out here, but it's a little bit more symmetrical this way. So again, I'm trying to, you might see different formattings for the balance sheet. There's no just one way to do it that is best, but this is some just general techniques that you can use to kind of clean up your, your balance sheet and your financial statements. And again, useful if you're creating something like a form, simulating like a tax return, making a long calculation that could be drawn out algebraically, possibly horizontally into a long kind of formula, which gives you the sub calculations along the way, breaking out the detail. All right, so then we're gonna say, let's make this black and white up top and let's make just make this black and white. Let's do some formatting here. Let's make this whole top bit black and white. And then maybe this should be black and white across the whole thing. And I should probably make this balance sheet like in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this whole thing and you'd probably say, well, why don't you just merge it? But I don't like doing that because it, because now I, I have like this one giant cell. So I prefer selecting all of these cells, right click and then format the cells and go into alignment. And then I want to say center align and then boom. Oh, wait a sec. That's not right. <laughs> Undo. Let's do it again format cells uh and then i want to say that it needs to be center across the selection that's the one and then boom all right there we have let's do this one again with the, this one let's go right click format cells and then i could go alignment center across the selection boom now i could do that for like this centering it across here don't really need to maybe i'll i'll do it just for the heck of it format cells center across the selection so there's my assets do it here right click format and then center across the selection just so the oh no that's the wrong one dude that's the wrong one format the cells center across the selection and then i'd have to do it down here now oh make it black white right click format the cells center across the selection okay and then i'm going to make this blue because that's what i normally do and i'm going to right click and format the cells i like wait wait wait, not that now let's go it up here font i want to make it that color blue if you don't have that color it's in the more you don't have to use that color but that's what i use standard color wheel it's that color right there boom I'm borders around it. Bam. Let's do the same thing here. Border blue. Same thing here. Border blue. Let's do a spell check. I'm sure I spelled things wrong. Hopefully that hasn't frustrated. So I'm just going to leave that as is. Ignore that one. Ignore all of those. Ignore all of that. That's not where liabilities. That's probably wrong. Change it change it okay receivable that's probably wrong okay all right i'm cool with that all right so there we have it so we just have the balance sheet now the other financial statements would be the income statement or profit and loss but we'll have to add that when we add new data and then possibly a statement of equity which is going to reconcile the prior equity to the, to the current equity of the prior period to the current period, and then a statement of cash flows, which I'm not gonna get into uh, in detail here. We have a whole nother course or section on the statement of cash flows. If you wanna get into how to build that uh, in, in, 
in a, in, so you can dive into that if you want. It's a really interesting thing to look into. It gives you a much better understanding of how the double entry accounting system works if you can actually build a, a statement of cash flows using both the direct and indirect method, but that's a whole thing in and of itself. So that's the general, I just put a double underline over here because we're in balance. We're in balance, just like just like a swan on one leg with one leg uh, in the, even with the river flowing like crazy, it's totally in balance. 